Hey friends, today we're gonna learn how to add authentication to any Angular app using AWS Cognito. Generally, whenever we build any application, we have to have integrate a authentication mechanism to that. But to build an authentication mechanism for a web application or a mobile application, there are a lot of challenges. So like how you gonna store the user ID and password in a database, whether that has been encrypted or not, whether that database is secure enough or not. Another challenge is how you gonna maintain the password policy. Then another challenge is how you gonna maintain the forgot password um, functionality, then how you wanna look after that change password functionality. And nowadays like a few more advanced web application or mobile applications the user are asking for two-factor authentication also so to answer all these kind of challenges so aws have one service which is called aws cognito service which is a answer to all these challenges so today we want to look into how to configure uh, the this storage or the user pool in aws cognito where you can create users and then once those users are created how you can integrate your angular app uh, with this cognito so we will first start with a uh, demo of how to create a user pool in aws cognito and then we'll show you the integration how the integration has been done and then we're going to share with you the code snippet which can be used to do the integration with the aws cognito okay so let me start so let me give you a quick example so here let's say this is my application login component so this one uh, like i am using the amplify sdk to integrate the cognito in my angular application so you have to just do the import of these two lines and then amplify you have to configure so you have to specify these are the minimum configuration requirement which i have done but there are a lot of other options also which when you will keep on exploring the cognito you will get to know and you can add into your application but here is the minimum basic flow okay based on user id and password how you can authenticate your application user to the cognito service so you have to mention what is the reason what is the user pool id what is the user pool web client id and here authentication flow type as i mentioned we are going to use user id and password based authentication so now I'm gonna show you how to get the value of these. So region definitely you can get uh, easily in which region you are going to launch the Cognito. It could be Singapore, Sydney, US, uh, anything which is available zone they have. So I'm gonna show you what is the user pool ID, how you're gonna get it and user pool web client ID. So once we are done with the configuration of Amplify, then this login method I'm calling on a click of login button and then here you can see this auth is a here the variable which has been defined so just putting auth dot sign in you can call the authentication method so you have to pass user id and password and once the user is successful then you can navigate to the home page over here so Sometimes these are the option also like if error comes or if this new password any user must have to change their password if uh, it is a first time login then you it's gonna throw you a challenge and which is the name is new password required then you can na navigate the user to the change password UI and their user can enter the user ID old password and new password and then they gonna send back to the login page so you don't need to so the may worry about the code so i am gonna share it with you in the video description uh, so the main key things over here 
to observe R. So we have two method. One is sign in and another is this change password method also. So these are the things you are supposed to do in your Angular app and the same can be used in a React app also. And maybe I will do a new video for that. So same thing can be used and you can integrate your React app also using the same thing. So now we will go to the AWS Cognito where we're gonna create a user pool. So let's say I'm gonna put a test user pool. So now we're gonna select this step through settings and how do you want your end user to sign? To the answer of this question, we will go with email address and then what next question is which standard attribute do you want to require? So I'll just say, okay, I need email ID, but you can mandate the phone number also, any other thing if you want. So like this is mentioned here, it's all up to your requirements, then go to next step. So this is the password minimum length. You have option to set, you need number, special character, all those things I'm leaving as a default, but you can change what you want. So here I'm saying, okay, do you want to allow user to sign themselves? So I'm saying like, okay, you can leave this or this. So based on your requirement, it's goes. So I'm saying allow admin to create users. And then this one we can leave as it is. So now moving to next. Do you want to enable multi-factor authentication? Okay, we don't want as of now, but you, if you want, you can enable it. How will a user be able to recover their account from email? Okay, cool. Let's move to next. Which attribute do you want to verify? Email, okay, cool. You must provide a role to allow Amazon Cognitor to send SMS messages. So this one also, it's coming by default, so you don't need to change, you can leave as it is. Now, do you want to customize your email address? So this email address is the one when a user is going to get their credential for your application. So you can put your own email or admin email or you can leave as it is. So I'm going with the default option. Just use Cognito and I'm not going to fill anything over here. Everything is going to be default. So do you want to customize your email verification message? So I'm just still leaving as it is, but you can put very uh, any kind of message, whatever you like, what is more convenient and understandable to your users. So all these things we're gonna leave as it is. So now no tags. Do you want to remember your user devices? So this one, if your application is mobile also and they can they are doing sign up from multiple devices so then you can select always or user obtain otherwise you can leave as it is no so we are moving to next so now add an app client so here i'm gonna put okay so my test app so and this one i no need for now this one i no need i'm removing this lambda trigger i also don't need i'm just going with a simple username password based authentication so i'm doing and check to all the other options so now create app client so this was giving okay so let's move next do you want to customize your workflow with triggers so this one we don't need but these kind of workflow are required let's say if user is so means if you are allowing them to do a sign up so you may want to validate their email id whether it's true or fake so these kind of things then you have to choose so but we don't need as all these things so we are going with a simple functionality and then at the last we are done so this is the create pool so first thing uh, where in this we need a user pool id so this is the user pool id we once we click on this general setting from here you can use this pool id and then 
now next is user pool web client id means the application id so here it is app clients under this we have created this so this app client id you can copy and paste over here and once this is done so you can test it it's definitely gonna work and i think we are done with this okay if you guys like this video and if it is useful to you just please give a thumbs up thank you